This video topic seems pretty ridiculous. You're looking at the title, you saw the thumbnail, and you're like, what the hell is LEGO talking about now? What? I know, that's exactly what happened when I read the article that we're going to be reading today in this video. But don't get me wrong, this is the kind of story that I think people are going to want to hear more about rather than want to skip out on. It's one of those things that once you learn about it, it's like, oh, that's actually pretty cool, and it's nice to see things work out the way that they did. So today we're talking about a name that we've actually mentioned a lot in passing over the past few weeks. It's Arizona Coyotes defenseman Shane Gostaspare. Now, the reason we've talked about Gostaspare or Ghost Bear quite a lot the past few videos is because when talking about the Jake Chitron trade conversations with the Coyotes, talking about the Senators or the Oilers, the Maple Leafs, the Blue Jackets, all these teams that Chitron is linked to, we always kind of have to talk about him and his situation before diving into the trade rumor that we are discussing in said video. Every time we talk about Chitron, we talk about how last season, or no, not last season, two seasons ago in 2020-2021, the shortened 56-game campaign, he was the top goal guy amongst all D-men in the National Hockey League. He's a pretty solid top four, top three defenseman that can get a lot of points. However, those points didn't come to the same magnitude in the most recent season of play in 2021-2022. Now, I would always say that, hey, Jake Chitrin was not given a lot of power play time on the first unit, which is why his point production declined, but it's a combination of that and the fact that he was also injured. The reason he wasn't given too much power play one time this season, though, or last season, I guess I should say, yeah, this season is 2022-2023, which hasn't begun yet, but then again, semantics aside, the reason Chitrin was taken off the first power play unit was because the Arizona Coyotes got another guy that kind of replaced him, Shane Gostaspare from the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, Gostaspare is a name that we've been talking about on this channel literally since like 2016. It's been a long time going over Goss Despair and seeing what he's become in the past few years. This is because back as a third round pick in the 2012 NHL entry draft, Goss Despair kind of came out of nowhere when it came to just what he was able to accomplish as a prospect. He was so good for Union College in the NCAA, getting 34 points in 42 games played as the team won the national championship in 2013-14. The seasons after, he had made the Flyers organization and, in 2015-16, was a finalist for the Calder Trophy alongside Connor McDavid and the eventual winner, Artemi Panarin. Ever since then, though, Gossespierre had a few ups and downs. He wasn't really able to sustain the amount of production that he was able to get. He had 65 points in 78 games played in 2017-18, but the seasons after saw Gossespierre really fall out of favor with the Flyers. He stopped producing as much as he did in the past. Injuries slowly started to get up to him, and he got so bad to the point that the contract that he was on, $4.5 million a season till the end of 2023, was traded alongside of a few draft picks to the Arizona Coyotes for nothing. The Philadelphia Flyers just straight up gave up on the Shane Gostaspare experiment and decided to hand money out to a guy like Rasmus Ristolainen instead. Now that's another conversation for another day, but ever since going over to the Arizona Coyotes, Gostaspare has been nothing short of spectacular. Last season, playing for a bad Arizona squad, he had 51 points in 82 games played, the most points he's had in the season since that 65-point campaign in 17-18. This year, you have yourselves Goss Despair in a contract situation, or a contract year, I should say, excuse me. And you know the Arizona Coyotes, they kind of want Bedard, so they're probably going to go out there and trade Shane Goss Despair sometime at the trade deadline, assuming he goes out there and produces a sizable amount of points, because he doesn't have any trade protection, and this is an asset that the Arizona Coyotes got alongside of draft picks that they have molded into a contract that actually looks pretty valuable, because a guy getting 50 points as a blue liner on a number one power play unit, I think any team wouldn't say no to getting that type of player for free. But if we go back to what Shane Gostaspare was doing in his Union College days, this is where the story gets a little bit interesting. We're going to be talking about an article published on ESPN yesterday by Ryan Clark, how Kale McCarr, Adam Fox, and other fast young defensemen are changing the National Hockey League. 
This is a pretty good article going over the changes of the National Hockey League from before until today and how younger guys that seem to be really fast, mobile, and offensively potent seem to be leading the charge. There's a conversation about Yossi, there's Kale McCarr going on in here, there's Adam Fox, and then other names like Shabbat, Chicharin, McAvoy, Sergachev, Dobson, Quinn Hughes, all the names that you are expecting to see in this kind of conversation here. But if you go over to some of the quotes made by the these defenders in conversation for this article, it gets really interesting when you talk about who inspired who. Growing up, I felt like that was kind of the way the game was heading, said Zach Warinsky, who was drafted by the Columbus Blue Jackets in 2015. A lot of defensemen were puck moving. I played at the NTDP with Noah Hannafin and Charlie McAvoy, guys who play similar styles to me. Now you see Kale McCarr and Roman Yossi, those guys are so talented, almost scoring 30 goals at 100 points while still playing great D. Nowadays, to be successful, the game is so fast, you have to be a good skater, but you also have to be able to create offensively as well. There are some more comments made by other guys, Rasmus Dahlin, there's a comment or two made by him. It's a really good read, so go out there in the description and click the link to read this piece on ESPN.com. But the conversation we're talking about today comes from Kale McCarr. Take a look at this assessment right here. McCarr, who was the second overall defenseman drafted after Heisken in 2017, said he started playing defense in Adam Hockey. He said he liked being a forward, but enjoyed being a D-man more because it allowed him to be the first skater back and in a position to control the game. He praised his youth coaches who helped him gradually get more comfortable being a puck-moving defenseman. McCarr said those coaches showed him a lot of faith, to the point he admits to looking like a little bit of a puck hog when watching footage from his youth hockey days. Even back then, Makar could use his agility, his stick handling, speed, timing, and vision as a way of deceiving opponents to his advantage. But because he did not see defensemen at higher levels play that way, Makar thought it might not work as he went up the ranks. It might have been the first year in Canada they aired the NCAA championship with Shane Gostaspare in Union, Makar recalled. That was kind of the first guy where I was like, wow. He's doing that. All the stuff that I'm doing right now, but at a level that is way higher. In my mind, it was like, wow, there is some hope there. It was the first moment I realized there was a change in style. That was definitely a defining moment for sure. And so what Makar is pretty much saying here is that part of the reason why he felt comfortable working his way up in the NHL, or excuse me, in the AJHL to the NCAA to the NHL ranks in the way that he did was because he got inspired by watching Shane Gostaspare's dominance in the NCAA, especially in the NCAA championship game, and he noticed the similarities between Gostaspare and himself. When Gostaspare played in the NCAA championship, Kale McCarr was, what was he, like, three years before he was drafted, so he was like 15 years old? And so, to be able to look up to a guy like that and say, yeah, no, this is the guy that kind of allowed me to be confident in the way that I play and be confident that how I play is going to translate to higher levels of hockey, all of a sudden now it's like, dude, Kale McCarr is the best defenseman in the NHL. You could debate he's a top five player in the league, maybe even top three if you really wanted to push it. And this guy was inspired by Gostaspare, who just had such a resurgence in his career after a whole bunch of misfortune towards the end of his Philadelphia Flyers days. Now, I know it's kind of crazy to go out there and say that Gostaspare is the guy that made Makar what Makar is today, but it appears that, at the very least, he had somewhat of a hand in giving Makar that little extra push that he might have needed to really become what he is now. A dominant, number one, franchise-altering defenseman. Talk to the comments all your thoughts about Shane Gossespierre and what he used to be, how he is transformed back into a version of his older self with the Arizona Coyotes. How well do you think he's going to play in 2022-2023? I hope he plays well because I took him as one of my last picks in my fantasy hockey league with Audie James, Hot Take Hockey, and a few other hockey YouTubers whom you might recognize as well. So for my fantasy team's sake, yeah, I hope Shane Gosses Bear goes out there and does pretty well. But if you're an Arizona Coyotes fan, which I don't really know if there are too many of you out there, Please, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Shane Gostaspare and his progression from what he was, which was an extra throw-on, a scrap player with a contract that you got for free alongside of draft picks, to what he is today, a 50-point defenseman? That's pretty great in my eyes, but what are your opinions? Do you think he expands on that more next season? 
Let me know in the comments. If you're a Flyers fan as well, what are your opinions on the resurgence of Shane Gossespierre, as well as the idea that he legitimately went out there and inspired Kale McCarr to being what McCarr is today? Talk to me in the comments about your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaraj Rolls 99. And bye.